No dream is ever impossible. I might succeed as an entrepreneur, I might not. I don't know. But I would never know if I don't take the leap of faith, if I don't try and take the risk. Take risk, believe in yourself, and be patient. Hi, this is Shlomo Sosin, the host of the Teenage Impact Podcast, where we share stories, tips, and strategies on how you as a teenage kid can overcome your daily struggles in life. If you're tuning in for the first time, and if you haven't done so, if you're going through this funk, you can't seem to get out of it, I provided a link in the description called the seven quick and easy ways to feel better by yourself. These are life-changing tips that you can instantly, you can right away implement, and you can start seeing results and feel more fulfilled and happy in your life. And these are tips based off of my own experiences and based off of the 30 interviews that I have done. If you're tuning in for the first time and you're on Apple Podcasts, rate and review the Teenage Impact Podcast, trying to rank as high as possible so I can inspire more teens. For those who follow me on Instagram and on Facebook, know that I recently quit my full-time job, Leap Caller, to go pursue my dreams, to become a full-time entrepreneur in Philadelphia. I, had, I graduated about almost six years ago from the University of South Florida. I majored in information systems and business management, minor in entrepreneurship. Past five and a half years, I've been working with my sister and brother-in-law in their startup. It was first leapdoctor.com, then transitioned to we were working on some other projects and it became Leap Caller. But on the side, I was working, I had this dream, I had this vision that I was going to inspire millions of people around the world one day. And now I'm pursuing that full-time in Philadelphia. Today's podcast is going to be about my journey as a full-time entrepreneur. Ever since middle school, I remember there was this one middle school assignment that we had where we were given a homework assignment on what do we want to be when we grow up? It was a tough question. I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. No one wants, no one knows what they want to be when they grow up. I thought long and hard. So I thought about it, thought about it, thought about it. I ran across this word entrepreneur. I'm like, hmm, what does entrepreneur mean? It intrigued me. I was curious. And as a middle school kid, I was always looking up words in the dictionary. And what the word entrepreneur meant in, you know, the fancier term entrepreneur basically means own your own business and taking the financial risk in order to do so. And all of a sudden, a light bulb just went out. I thought to myself, hmm, I want to become an entrepreneur. I want to have freedom. I want to own my own business and be really, really rich one day. Actually, I, I was hanging out with one of my friends from middle school about last year in Texas. And he, he told me, he said, Shlomo, in middle school, you would always tell me, watch, this name would be worth millions one day. And I had an accent. So I, he said in an accent, he's like, Shlomo, Shlomo would be worth millions one day. And I would always tell my friends that. And it's, it's crazy because when I went into high school, that dream somehow got lost. I didn't think about becoming an entrepreneur. I adapted to what society wanted. And what society wanted was me to get good grades, which I, I did, get into college. I got to the University of South Florida. And then get good grades, figure out what you want to do, get a nice cushy job, DN, work for 40 years, you retire, you become a millionaire in the, by, the, by retirement. No, 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 no. I didn't want that. I knew in college there was something missing. I, didn't, I, I knew I didn't want to do medicine because I absolutely hated science and knew I didn't want to do engineering. I knew I wanted to do something in business, but I didn't think about being an entrepreneur because first of all, when you see TV, you think, okay, successful entrepreneurs are the only, only people that have special genes. I came up in a rich household. I didn't come up in a rich household. I had very crappy jeans. I was never good at anything. How can I own my own business and make a million dollars? Well, that dream was long gone. So I was, I was first two years, I kind of messed around, didn't really do much. Grades were average. And then 
I notice that as I'm going to class, I'm not enjoying class. I, I picked an accounting major, then I picked management information systems because I was in a rush my senior year. I wasn't enjoying class and I was bored in class. I wasn't paying attention. I wasn't getting internships. The only internships I was getting was business development internships, which everyone pretty much got those types of internships. And I got a data entry position at my, when my sister opened up the company, Leap Doctor, which back then connecting physicians to hospitals. So I thought there was something wrong with me. I'm not getting any internships. I'm bored in class. I genuinely thought something was wrong with me. Fifth year of college came around, or the summer before my fifth year. I was kind of at a low point, going through some stuff, didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. And I ran across a book called The Success Principles by Jack Canfield. And that book was completely changed my life, completely changed my viewpoint. There is a couple of chapters within the book where they have you do exercises where you write out your passions, what you like to do, what are you good at, what comes natural to you. And that is when I realized my purpose. I wanted to build confidence and inspire people. I wanted to become a motivational speaker. I didn't know one thing about how to be a motivational pe speaker. In fact, I was terrified of public speaking. I was terrified of public speaking. Every time I would give a speech, I would just think about all the times people made fun of me because they didn't understand me because of my accent. But I knew I wanted to become a motivational speaker and inspire. This was at the age of 22. I just turned 22, which was summer 2013. I remember telling the first person, uh, this older guy, I think he was probably in his 40s. I told him my dream. He's like, hey, Shlomo, I haven't seen you in a while. One of my classmates, he was in one of my groups. We were talking about our future plans. And I asked him what he wanted to do. He, he said, oh, I have this amazing internship, blah, 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 blah. He's like, oh, what do you want to do? I said, I want to become a motivational speaker. He said, Shlomo, you can't be a motivational speaker. You have to have years and years and years of experience to be a motivational speaker. I don't think he tried to shut down my dream, but came off like that. So I'm like, ah, maybe he's right. Maybe I can't be a motivational speaker. But I'm a stubborn guy. Those who don't know me, I am a stubborn guy. I went on and okay, I put up on a top of piece of paper, motivational speaker. What can I do to become a motivational speaker? I listed out everything I need to get done. First thing on the list, I had to be good in sales. Because in order to be good in sales, in order to inspire people, I had to be good in communicating. I had to be sell people my ideas. I went ahead, got a sales job, door-to-door -door sales. So as soon as I graduated college, May 2014, uh, three days later, I was shipped to Baltimore, did door-to-door -door sales. Didn't last very long, two, about two months, but I wouldn't call it a complete failure because I, I, learned, I learned how to work hard. I developed tough skin. And I learned how to communicate my ideas. And I learned the basic principles of selling. After that, I joined my sister's company full-time, not as a data entry person, but as a physician recruiter. She moved her company to Tampa, Florida, where I was one of the two employees, the only employee in Tampa. The other one was in Michigan. So I was in the cubicle. They got an office. I was in the cubicle by myself working long hours trying to make this business work. And basically, I'm not going to give you the whole entire story, but we were, we had a lot of trials and tribulations. We went through about five or six projects that didn't work out. We spent a lot of money. We traveled the country to do different conferences. We uh, had up to, you know, 25 employees at one point. And it was just amazing to see the journey until one project stuck, you know, uh, I was making a lot of cold calls to physicians and a developer created a software to help you make more calls. They call that power dialer. And so I started off as power dialer, then we pivoted to an all-in-one sales platform. Now it's a communication tool, which we started getting a lot of clients all of a sudden, especially Mary Kay representatives. Business was starting to take off. We started getting more customers. But at the same time, I'm trying to pursue my dream. So in the past five and a half years, 
I've also been pursuing, okay, what can I do to become a speaker and inspire people? First thing I did, I think it was October of 2014. I was 23 years old. I joined Toastmasters. Then I took a sales class for Dale Carnegie. So I did that. Won the sales presentation champion that boosted up my confidence. And I went ahead and did Toastmasters competition. I won three competitions, was a district finalist, and I was beating people who were much more experienced than me. And, and I felt good about myself. I'm saying, okay, you know, I'm winning speech competitions, but to become a professional speaker, it takes a lot more than winning speech competitions. What else do I need to do? Okay, I need leadership positions. I started taking leadership positions. I took a toast, I became the president for Toastmasters. I went ahead and became the chief executive officer for my fraternity, the National Alumni Association. So I had leadership positions under my belt, started developing leadership skills, started learning about leadership. Okay, what else do I need to do? I need to get mentored by the best. I signed up for Brian Tracy's Speaking Academy. I was the youngest one in the group by far, the least experienced one. And I didn't even know how to build my speaking career. Went there. I read about 60, 65 books in three years. And, you know, I needed knowledge. I needed to learn all these different skills. Another thing I had to do is, okay, maybe I, maybe I could be famous online. I started a YouTube channel called Public Speaking Guy. And for those who have been following me since the beginning of my journey, public sp I used to introduce myself as slow mo the public speaking guy. And I would give public speaking tips. And then I started, I got hired to run youth leadership programs to teach the youth public speaking leadership. I did that for a couple of years. Okay, I see, okay, this is not going anywhere. What else do I need to do? I hired another public speaking coach for six months. And he helped me with the business side aspect of creating a business. I landed my first client, one-on-one -on -one coaching. And then I realized, hmm, I'm not a big fan of one-on-one -on -one coaching teams. I like more workshops. So I started trying to create different events, which that didn't work out. So I pivoted my YouTube channel to Purpose Creates Impact. I started posting YouTube channels twice a week. I realized one weekend why I still have this full-time job, why I'm still trying to build one company. I'm still trying to develop another company. So I was overwhelmed. I started developing anxiety. I was just overworked. And one weekend I was reflecting. I had an unproductive weekend. I was taking a shower and I said, you know what? Why don't I go into the teenage mental health category? This is sometime April, 2019. I then I started to do the research. Okay. I've always wanted to interview people. I'm really good at it. I've been networking around Tampa Bay for about two years. I got really good at developing relationships around Tampa Bay. Maybe I could be good at developing relationships and interviewing people. For the next two or three weeks, I'm doing market research. I'm surveying different teenagers on what they wanted. And I've noticed a lot of teens struggle with mental health. And they wanted to see a book like the one I'm creating called Never Fight Alone. What did I do? I started DMing people. I started DMing people. I said, okay, I really want to know how to create my Instagram account. I really want to know how to interview different people. I really want to uh, do my book. So I started brainstorming names from a book. I started ideas from a book. And the next thing you know, I'm pivoting from Purpose Chris Impact to Teenage Impact. I started, I released my first five episodes end of July of 2019 and I started, I had interviews lined up. I had about five interviews lined up and I started getting more interviews lined up and I, and I started realizing I'm actually building an audience. It's not that much. I've, I've gotten probably over 2000 downloads in five and a half months from 25 different countries, but it's more than I have ever received in Purpose Groups Impact and Public Speaking Guys. So I thought to myself, hmm, I might have something here. My friend, Armand Chowdhury, he said, you know, Shlom, I think you should go full-time. This was back in April or May. And I said, no, I can't go full-time. I have to start making money right now. And then once I start having enough money, then I'll go full-time. But then I thought about it. And I thought about it. I thought about it. So it's never the perfect time. And the perfect time is right now. Why I'm building momentum why I'm writing my book, why I'm creating my, my podcast, building all these relationships, now is the perfect time. So I went ahead, 
put like my two months notice to my sister and brother-in-law, give them plenty of time to kind of transition my work over to them and really say my goodbyes. De- Mid-December was my last time as a working for someone else. I moved to Philadelphia, got an apartment in, in downtown Philly, the, center, uh, the Rittenhouse area. So things have been going around. I've finally moved. It's been a little bit overwhelming, just trying to get situated in Philadelphia, learning the roads, learning everything around me. And this is the first time moving outside of Tampa, moving outside of Tampa, Florida, into a brand new city where I only know just a couple of people. And this is the first time I'm a full-time entrepreneur. It's been basically a dream of mine ever since I was in middle school. Really, I've been wanting to become an entrepreneur actively probably when I'm 20, 20 to 22. I've always had ideas in my head, never kind of pursued it. 23, 22, 23 is when I've actively started pursuing speaking. And it's been good. I've done a lot in the past five and a half years. I've learned a lot of skills. I learned how to build relationships. I learned how to sell. I learned how to market. I learned the art of leadership. I developed a passion for what I'm doing and for helping people. And I, st- I learned the art of connecting with another person. I learned the art of communicating. I can go to, I feel like I can go to any room, any city and make friends with anyone. And I really got good at public speaking. I can comfortably go in any stage and give a speech with confidence and conviction. So I'm here, I'm trying to learn the ropes as a full-time entrepreneur. My, my goals for the next, I would say three months is start doing speaking engagements for schools and youth organizations, anti-bullying and mental health speaking engagements. Uh, second plan is, is I wanna finish my book and release it and then go on a Never Fight Alone book tour and then my third goal is just to start building my online presence. I, my, my website should be coming out in the next week. I'm going to have a blog section. I'm going to still, pro- now I'm going to provide written content. I've been providing videos and audio content. Now I'm going to start providing written content. I'm also going to have different team blog writers actually share their story because I've been telling my story. Other people have been telling their story through podcasts. I'm going to actually have people write about their stories and tips on how you can overcome certain daily struggles. So that's my goals for the next three to four months. I'm super excited. This is uh, a little bit overwhelming. You know, sometimes I feel anxiety coming coming along because this is this is something new to me. And I'm I'm truly grateful for the journey. I'm truly grateful for everyone that's listening. What you can take out of it is no dream is ever impossible. I might succeed as an entrepreneur. I might not. I don't know. But I would never know if I don't take the leap of faith, if I don't try and take the risk. Take risk, believe in yourself, and be patient. Enjoy the journey. And do never, ever let, te- let anyone tell you that your dream is too big, that you are not able to do it, that you are too young. Because I have interviewed young entrepreneurs at 13, 14, 15 years old, traveling the country, traveling the world, inspiring people, making six figures or seven figures as a high schooler. And not many people can do that, but you. You have to decide for yourself what you want. It may not be entrepreneurship. It may be you're going to become the first doctor in your family. Or maybe you want to become a teacher and pave the way for the youth. Whatever it is, do with passion, have patience, and work extremely hard, take a lot of risk, and you will succeed. Like I said before, my website's coming out next week. But in the meantime, if you have a friend that's in this funk that you really think that can benefit from the Teenage Impact Podcast, my podcast is available in iHeartMedia, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. Spotify, basically Stitcher, basically every major podcasting platform. Go ahead, share the Teenage Impact podcast. And until next time, peace.